please welcome Alessandro to the stage. Hello, everyone, and thank you again for joining us today. I'm Alessandro Ricottone, and I'm a research scientist here at LISC. Today, I'm going to give you a first glimpse at LISC interoperability. 2020 has been a very important year for the development side of LISC with the implementation of the new SDK. But it's been a busy year also on the research side, with the research team focusing completely on interoperability. We structure our research in four milestones. In the first milestone, the state-of-the-art overview, we performed a survey of the research paper and the available technologies in the ecosystem. We obtained a vast knowledge of what is possible today, and we moved then to the second milestone, interoperability direction. In this milestone, we identified and analyzed a set of feasible solutions, and we reached a decision for a general direction for LISC interoperability. In milestone three, specification details, we are researching, discussing, and drafting all the interoperability specifications. Interoperability is a very complex topic. We identified more than, different, more than 10 different pieces that all have to work together in order to have a successful interoperability protocol. As part of this milestone, we will reach a final decision on these specifications. Finally, in milestone four, we will move to the interoperability leaps. For those of you who don't know them, leaps, the LISC, inter, the LISC improvement protocols, are the way in which our community can participate in researching and proposing improvements to the LISC protocol. As part of this milestone, we will draft the specifications with several LIPS, and then we will go through the usual established review process. Right now, we are finalizing milestone three. But without further ado, let's start to talk about interoperability. And let's start by asking a question, what is interoperability? In a nutshell, we can say that two blockchains are interoperable if a transaction in one chain can have an effect in the other chain. As an example, a transaction T1 here in green in chain one is first included in chain one and then as an effect later on chain two. Vice versa, a transaction T2 here in yellow is first included on chain two and then as an effect on chain one. Let's, let's look at a concrete example and take a transfer of 100 LISC tokens from the main chain to a side chain. The effect on chain one, the main chain, would be to debit the user with 100 LISC, and the effect on chain two, the side chain, would be to then credit the user with the 100 LISC. A very important property that we want for these cross-chain transactions is atomicity. Atomicity means that the transaction effects have to happen either on, blockchain, on both chains or in none. In this specific case, it would mean that if something goes wrong on the sidechain, we do not want to debit the user with 100 LISC on main chain without crediting them on the sidechain. And uh, then, the, as, a, as a result, we would have nothing happen at all in this case. The general technique that we use to achieve interoperability are cross-chain updates. This is a general technique that allows us to include information from one chain into another chain. These cross-chain updates will contain some general chain information and the cross-chain transactions. In this diagram here, I show some finalized blocks here in pink in the chain one. Information and cross-chain transactions from these finalized blocks are packed together in a single cross-chain update that then is included on chain two as a special transaction and processed as part of the normal transaction processing. In particular, the technique that we use to achieve interoperability from the LISC main chain to a side chain are cross-chain updates from the main chain. In cross-chain updates from the main chain, we pack together all the cross-chain transactions that are targeting the side chain. Then the cross-chain update is signed by the main chain delegates and is posted on the side chain. Finally, its effects will be applied on the side chain. In this example here, the cross-chain update in blue will then contain the main chain state, or some information about the main chain, and the cross-chain transactions, again, from the main chain to the side chain. In the other direction, 
the technique that we use to have interoperability from a sidechain to the LISC main chain are cross-chain updates from the sidechain. Here instead, we pack all the cross-chain transactions that are coming from the sidechain. The cross-chain update is signed by the sidechain validators and then is included on the main chain where its effects are applied. The cross-chain update here in pink will contain the sidechain state and the cross-chain transactions from the sidechain. Finally, we can combine these techniques together to achieve communication from a sidechain to another sidechain. In this case, the cross-chain transactions, in this example from sidechain one, are included in a cross-chain update that is posted on main chain. And then another cross-chain update from the main chain to sidechain two will also contain these cross-chain transactions from the original cross-chain update that will finally will reach sidechain two, where their effect will be applied. So we see here a very important feature. Cross-chain transaction will be routed by the main chain, even for this case of sidechain to sidechain communication. Let me summarize now what are the most important features of cross-chain updates. They're scalable. They allow us to have no hard protocol bound on the number of sidechains that can connect to the main chain and participate into interoperability. They're flexible. Sidechains can post cross-chain updates only when it is needed, meaning that if there are no cross-chain transactions, there will be no need to post them. They are secure because cross-chain updates will be signed either by main chain delegates or by the sidechain validators. They're fast. As I showed you before, as soon as a block is finalized, the cross-chain transactions that were included in the block can already be packed in a cross-chain update that can be posted in another chain. Finally, they are efficient because the main chain will only release cross-chain custom transactions without actually processing them. As part of LISC interoperability, we're specifying two new transactions. The first one, the cross-chain token transfer. Among other properties that are shared by other transactions, such as the sender public key, we have the amount, the recipient chain address, and the recipient address. As for a normal balance transfer, the amount allow a user to specify how many LISC they want to move. And the recipient address specify the target address that will receive these funds. But we see here that there is a new property, the recipient chain address. This recipient chain address will specify the target chain where these funds will be moved to. With this transaction, users will be able to move their, their LSK tokens within the entire ecosystem. And this transaction will be part of the global protocol of the ecosystem, meaning that every chain in the LISC ecosystem will be able to process it. The second transaction that we'll specify is the cross-chain custom transaction. This transaction contains the custom data property. This property encaps encapsulates the data that is needed for a custom transaction, meaning that developers can create their own custom transaction and then immediately upgrading it to a cross-chain custom transaction just by including it into the custom data. Let me illustrate you the power of LISC interoperability. Let's look at a concrete example. Our story here starts from the main chain, where a user has some funds. The first thing they do, they move some list tokens to an exchange and swaps them for a fungible token, here indicated by these coins in silver. This exchange is just a side chain that is connected to the main chain via the interoperability protocol. In the second step, the user sends its funds from these new fungible token funds from the exchange sidechain to the prediction market sidechain with a custom cross-chain transaction. In the prediction market sidechain, the user can bet against the outcome of a certain event. For example, in this case, they bet against the winner of the Nobel Prize in Physics for the year 2020, and they say that it will be Roger Penrose. In the third step, an Oracle sidechain feeds external information, again, with a cross-chain custom transaction, to the prediction market sidechain. And indeed, they will feed the information that Penrose won the Nobel Prize in physics. Finally, 
The prediction market can now process uh, the bet, and the user can redeem their fund. What we saw here is really the power of interoperability, where the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. These sidechains achieved new features that they didn't have using interoperability to communicate with each other. We saw that the list balance transfer will be the common denominator of the whole ecosystem, where to initiate uh, custom transactions on a sidechain, user will first move LISC funds to the sidechain. And then using cross-chain custom transactions, they will start to use interoperability. Let me summarize what will be the features of LISC interoperability, starting from the main chain. The LISC main chain will have a key role in the ecosystem. All sidechains will require a registration on the main chain to participate into interoperability. Along with this registration, sidechains will receive an account on the main chain where all the relevant information will be stored. All cross-chain transactions are routed via the main chain. As I showed you before, if a user wants to send a transaction from a sidechain to another sidechain, these transactions will go through the main chain. Regarding custom tokens, the main chain will only support LISC tokens. That doesn't mean that custom tokens cannot be created and used on a sidechain. That just means that they cannot be stored in the main chain, since the main chain has no way of knowing what is the protocol supporting these custom tokens. So these custom tokens will just go through the main chain to reach any sidechain that is compatible with them. Let's look at the sidechain point of view now. Sidechains will be customizable. Regarding block rewards, developers can choose either to have no block rewards at all or to have a custom block rewards using native sidechain tokens. For the consensus part, this will also be customizable. Out of the box, the SDK will provide a module for proof of authority and for delegated proof of stake that will also be based on sidechain tokens. But of course, developers can create whatever consensus algorithm they want and implement it in their sidechains. Custom tokens, as I mentioned before, will be supported in sidechains and can move freely between all the sidechains that support their protocol. When we designed interoperability, we wanted to give it a strong sense of ecosystem. That's why the LISC token will be the common token of the whole ecosystem, and it will be possible to move it everywhere with a cross-chain balance transfer. Regarding fees, all transaction fees for every transaction in all sidechain will be paid in LISC. And regarding the address system, users will be able to retain the same address everywhere, meaning that they will all only have to remember one single keeper to sign and send a transaction anywhere in the ecosystem. Let me conclude now with an outlook. As I mentioned before, we are currently finalizing Milestone 3. All interoperability leaps will be revealed in the next spring in LISC.js 2021. Finally, we are currently evaluating the possibility of having an open source patent registration. For these reasons, we're not able to give too many technical detail, details today. And with that, I thank you. And I'll leave you here with a couple links to the LISC Research Forum and to the LIPS repository on GitHub. Check it out. Thank you, Alessandro. <clears throat> yeah, what can I say? Even though it's just the first glimpse, I love it. Really, really good. The LISC blockchain will become the directory for all LISC sidechains. The LSK token will play a central part on the LISC blockchain application platform and will be used for all transaction fees on all sidechains. We will be able to facilitate main chain to sidechain, sidechain to main chain, and sidechain to sidechain cross-chain transactions. And the best of all of it, it comes already next year as part of the LISC research is being revealed at LISC.js 2021 in spring. <laughs>